Ho, 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 and welcome to a Christmas extravaganza. This is Ditexmas, and today we're going to take a look at some new pan views all the way from Santa Land. Because it's Christmas, you're going to get a lucky chance to win one of these DVS goodies ready for Christmas. So if you're in the UK, if you like, share and subscribe to our channel, you will be in with a chance of winning this lovely DVS Bluetooth speaker. Links to your phone, wireless boombox, absolutely fantastic. Everybody wants one. And a DVS power bank. Suction cups on the back, sticks to the back of your phone and charges it, or any other device that you want to charge. I'm going to hand over to Ditech and he's going to run through this lovely pan of you range and the new stuff that we've bought out. Hello? I'm not sure what happened then, but somebody must have taken my place. Anyway, so welcome back to the how-to video. Today we're going to take a look at the new 20 megapixel pan of view. The new 20 mix, 20 megapixel pan of view, but uh, recess fitment, internal, and then the comparison between the old one. So you can see the old one is a much bigger box. This is a new colour scheme, so you can see the difference in box sizes. So if I take the all done out of the box. I might try not to break my back again. Housing, camera, two separate parts. If we get this uh, out on the table ready, and if I get this new nice colour scheme, get the box out ready, or out of the box, what you'll see is is a new style of adapter. So we've got the flat mounting plate, so it can be screwed straight to a ceiling or there's a uh, screw holes there where I can go onto a, a wall mount bracket which we've also got on order with a hook there, nice smaller base so this here is the new model same similar shape, the donut design, infrared along the ring it's got the adapters, the cables, they all sit in here so you've got alarm inputs, outputs, audio in, audio out, PoE clicks into the base and um, when you're fitting it, so that goes in there. Um, that's where look. That's the profile of it, effectively. And then we got this one here. Obviously, much deeper, much thicker, much heavier. Actually, um, you can see the size there. So, again, much smaller in size and weight, but still the same great effect. Okay, I'm going to put this big one away. And what we've also got is a recessed version. So the only difference with a recessed version and the normal version, so still 20 megapixels, this recessed version has a fly lead on the back here with all the relevant connections. But you can see there, it's got spring toggles on there. So they you drill the hole in the ceiling, tile, whatever it is you're fitting it in. Recess it there so it sits into the lip across here. The lip is there so that sits against the, the ceiling. These spring toggles come out as you tighten it and they will tighten down against the surface, whether it's plyboard, ceiling, plasterboard, whatever it is you're fitting it to. And then you connect the camera up as needed. Still the same size. The internal model doesn't have infrared. You can see there it's much thinner. So if you look at it as a comparison, much, much thinner. Um, but it doesn't have infrared because you don't have that black ring on there. Being internal, doesn't need it as much. Um, but there we go, so we'll put this back over here. So we do a new, new external, new internal version. So, next thing to look at. Let's take the lid off and do the lid. Same principle as the other one, the lid, the bottom lid, comes apart. So you could adjust the lenses. There we go. So you can see there, inside we've got a cover cap. If you take that cover cap off, you've got a reset button and an SD card slot there, but it's actually covered by this cap, which I'll put back on. Again, same rail principle, so they move around the rail, and then number two, three, etc. So they all move around independently. So if you look at it, move around on a rail, position it where you need. It's got the up and down axis on there. Um, so you can move them and then up down and it's got um, very focal remote zoom lens on it. So we're going to connect it up now and we're going to web browse into it and see what functions they got. So join me shortly where we'll see what it looks like. Cheers guys. Okay and welcome back to the how to video. Um, so we've put the panel view behind us. I've inverted it onto a pod top so it's easy to show you. The reason being is 
if I go and fit it outside, I don't have the correct bracket yet to fit it outside. There'll be a follow-up video with day and night performance in our compound. But for now, it's just to show you what you're going to expect from this unit. So what we're going to quickly do is put this into substream mode and then start all the views on the cameras. So we've got four camera modules there displaying in a substream. So you've got your PTZ controls in the top right. So zoom in, zoom out and focus controls. They are set to uh, auto focus. I'm going to just quickly show you the rail system. So if I move the cameras. You'll see what I mean. You've got that lateral up and down movement as well. So if I just do that quickly. Okay, so left, right, up and down movements. I'm gonna put it back like that so you can quickly see and understand what we've got there. If I stop the view, let's put one of the camera modules in. If I do uh, zoom that fully, 2.8 to 12 mil motorized lens. We'll do it all the way in. Now that will autofocus. And then I can do it all the way back out again. So you set the lenses up to cover the area you require. Four five megapixel lenses is a 20 megapixel total unit. Okay, into configuration. So same menu structure that you uh, can see, love. All the standard functions you'd expect. So what we'll do is start off in the basic information that is the camera model number there so it's the new 654 g1 model which replaces the older 654 model um menu to be aware of is the vca resource menu so you have to select if you want to use like line crossing and intrusion you select it to be the cameras one and three or two and four they're paired in that way you can't have all four cameras supporting smart vca which is line crossing intrusion etc they all support motion but only two of the four will support the smart functions really important that you understand that we've had quite a few people not uh, find that information and then need it to support all four channels where we can't sadly okay next one is the infrared light so it's going to load all four images what we can actually do on this model is turn there's three ir leds around the outer black ring which i showed you earlier you can turn those on and off as needed so if the camera is positioned and one of the infrared irs is pointing into uh, against the wall and reflecting back, which is causing image issues at night. You can actually disable that infrared and click save if that's what is happening. Um, for this demo, we're going to leave all infrareds on. Um, if you hover over this little JPEG, it'll tell you the position, the IR spread. So one, two, and three there. So that's effect. You know, basically how the modules are affected. What you can also do is click advanced. And it enables you to one to one channel. -y. So infrared one is controlled by camera one, infrared two by camera three, and infrared number three by camera four. You can, of course, change these. So I could have it in that format and click save. So whatever that camera is set in the in the day night setting, so camera two that I just change it to will affect infrared one. So it'll come on or off as the video dictates it against that module. So you tie the infrared into a camera module if you like using that advanced but you can enable disable through that menu there. So hopefully you understand that. Um, okay, past that, really, the other features are quite standard. So under network, you've got platform access and integration control. I haven't enabled uh, high connect, but you select high connect, enable it, fill in the details there. Click OK. Click save, and if we go back to it, hopefully it'll be online. So it's online. So I can effectively add that to my Height Connect account directly, or if you, most people would just add it to the NVR and then add the NVR to Height Connect. But you have both options available to you. Under video and audio, 
Each camera supports up to 5 megapixel streaming, so you can see I've set them all as 5 megapixel, but they can be reduced down if necessary. We plan to replace our 8 megapixel model with this 20 megapixel model and just have one item. And then if you need, you can just reduce it down. You can also adjust the frame rate, bit rate, and encoding. So I set these as H.265, 5 megapixel, 25 frames a second, but you adjust that accordingly. And each one is set the same. If I just cycle through them, you can see they're all the same. Audio, so we've got audio in and audio out on here, so you can actually adjust as needed, the volumes, etc. Region of interest, display info on stream, and target cropping. Image, each camera image menu is adjusted as needed. So under display settings, you adjust each one. So all of the different brightness contrast, exposure settings, day night switch. And again, that will affect the infrared light that you tie it to if you do that option. Backlight settings, white balance, image enhancement, and video adjustment. You can see that I've had to mirror it so it goes up to down because it's fitted on a tabletop. Again, it will be fitted outside shortly. OSD settings, privacy mask, and picture overlay. Under event, you'll see we've got basic events with motion detection, video tampering, etc., alarm input and output. Under smart event, if I choose line crossing, for instance, it's currently only supported on one and three, but again, you can enable that up to four lines. Minimum, maximum object size, draw your area, thresholds and sensitivity. So all of the standard VCA functionality is built into it. Arm in schedule and linkage action. So it's quite comprehensive. And then if you want to put an SD card in there, which is advisable, you can actually set up uh, capture images and each one has its own parameters. So you can do time lapse from one specific module or all modules that you require. And then under storage management, that's where you initialize the, uh, the SD cards or network hard drives if you want to do it that way. Um, other than that, that's about it really. Um, I'm going to put it back into Live View. I'll turn the lights off, although really the ideal test is externally. So let's just uh, see what that performance is like. So just start the web all. Again, this is in mainstream now, so it's going to probably slow up a little bit but we'll try so you can see the nighttime performance one of the modules or two of the modules actually got into infrared we got a white light and the door light in you can see the performance is quite good you can see how slug it really is it's really struggling to keep up but you get the idea got this and there we have it there's me that camera and i hope you enjoyed the video so it's definitely smaller, neater, if not more powerful, more functionality in there. And we hope you enjoyed the video and the product. And we'll see you next week for another how-to video. Thanks for watching. Keep liking, subscribing and commenting. And we'll see you very soon. Cheers, guys.